Well, hello. I am uh, John Barrasso, an orthopedic surgeon from Casper, Wyoming, and uh, also a United States Senator. I am one of only two physicians who serve in the United States Senate, and I want to welcome you back to Senate Doctors. It's a show that uh, Tom Coburn and I have for the last four or five months been uh, coming to you twice a week. It is uh, from the Capitol Building. It is now Thursday, November 19th. Uh, we started doing these uh, before the August uh, break, uh, at the time when they were going to have a, a vote in the Senate, uh, supposedly and theoretically before the August break. Well, as I say, it is now Thursday, uh, November 19th, uh, coming up on Thanksgiving. And uh, finally, today, uh, there is now a bill in the United States Senate. A uh, Senate bill came out uh, yesterday by uh, Senator Harry Reid. Uh, we have the whole thing here for you to see. It is, I don't know if we can get a shot of this thing with one of these cameras. This is the Senate bill. I'll get all the way down to the app, yeah, pan all the way down there, what is it, 2,074 pages. Uh, very, very big. Over here we have the bill that passed the House. You can see this one. So with that big view, you, what you see is uh, the Senator Coburn's chair, and he'll be here shortly. But the two bills, the one that passed the House, a separate bill, that is now in front of the Senate. Uh, and uh, today, uh, Senator Reid has uh, filed cloture on the bill for a motion to proceed. And uh, we will be voting, I understand, Saturday night uh, at 8 o'clock, which will be the first vote uh, on this bill that uh, many people are today, for the first time ever, getting a chance to look at and to read. It's uh, something that, as you know, has been kind of behind closed doors. You've seen on television, on some of the networks, uh, the picture of the doors in the Capitol building and behind the doors where Harry Reid has been stitching together the bill from the uh, Help Committee and the bill from the Finance Committee and trying to stitch the two of those together. Uh, that's the bill that we have now. And you know, there are some things that were in the one bill and in the other bill that have failed to make it to that bill. And then there are other things that uh, were in neither bill that happened to show up there. Uh, so you look at this whole thing and you say, how do they do it and what's going to happen next? The, um, I went to the Senate floor today to talk a little bit about the bill. And uh, as what I said on the Senate floor is, it is, uh, it is something that, well, actually what I did is comment on something that Senator Reid had said. He said, of all the bills we've seen, he said, it'll be the best. That's what he said. And what I said, it is the best of the worst. So it really is nothing that, uh, that I think is a good prescription for the American people. It is not what we need for health care. Uh, looking at some of the morning papers as uh, writers from around the country took a look at that bill, uh, they said, you know, look, it still raises taxes. This isn't me talking now. The Associated Press says higher payroll taxes. The, um, another from the Associated Press, companies would pay a fee. Uh, the Washington Post uh, adding an array of tax increases, including a, a rise in payroll taxes. Uh, the uh, Washington Post, again, uh, rely primarily on a new tax. The uh, New York Times, uh, new taxes and fees. So it still raises taxes, which is what we've been talking about for the last four months. And you know what else? It still cuts Medicare, uh, relying on cuts in future Medicare spending to cover costs, uh, financed through uh, billions of dollars of Medicare cuts, uh, reduction in the growth of Medicare, and then talks about budget gimmicks. Uh, the, uh, the thing that's so interesting are the gimmicks that people have used on the Democrat side to get a score, a number, a cost estimate uh, that is in a certain range. And when they saw what this was going to cost, they said, well, you know, one of the ways to trick the American people is to, instead of starting the health care benefits in 2013, they moved it to 2014. Well, you know, it's only 2009. You're talking about five years from now. But they're going to start collecting the taxes the day that it passes, if it passes, and I'm going to try to stop it from passing. So when you look at this, it says, uh, this is, and this is again the New York Times, many provisions, many provisions would take effect in 2014. The delay is intended primarily to reduce the cost of the legislation. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to say, hey, we're going to help everybody. Well, if you need help, according to that bill, that over 2,000 page bill that you're looking at from the Senate, um, sounds like you need to wait until 2014 to benefit from it. The, um, 
And that's assuming that there's going to be benefits, but I think that some of the costs are even going to be greater than what the benefits are. And when you talk to people at town hall meetings, and I had a telephone town hall meeting just the other night, you ask people to uh, you know, raise, their, raise their hand, or actually there's a way with a the phone they can, they can dial in a number and say, you know, do you think you're going to pay more or less for health care if this passes? Yeah, people at town hall meetings all across the country, and certainly in Wyoming, think they're going to pay more. Then you say, you think the care you're going to get is going to be better or worse? People think that the care they're going to get is going to be worse. You don't want to pay more and get less, but that's what's going to happen if this becomes law. Well, let's get to the questions because part of this show is answering your questions, and we have a man on the street interview, and I think it's Kevin from Colorado. Kevin? I think most of the general public have questions as far as the pros and cons of this health care package. Uh, who is going to benefit from this and who is not and what it all entitles? Well, I think it's a great question, you know. Who is going to, what are the pros, what are the cons, what does it entail? Uh, and, and what we know about this bill is that for most people that have insurance and that like what they have, uh, many of them are going to find out they're not going to be able to keep what they have and that they like. Uh, and that's not what the president promised us a long time ago. Uh, and we're going to find out for people that have insurance and they either get it through their job or buy it personally, that they're finding that they're going to actually end up paying more for their health insurance, the health care that they get right now. And that's not what we want. And my big concern also is for people on Medicare, people who are seniors who depend on Medicare for their health care. How is that going to work out for them? Well, there's going to be Medicare cuts, about 500, almost $500 billion of Medicare cuts. And what's the whole thing going to cost? Well, the, once this actually goes into effect, and not the gimmicks where you're ending up taking in taxes before you actually start giving benefits, but one year for year, year for year, over a 10-year period, once it is totally in place, it's going to cost about $2.4 trillion. $2.4 trillion, an astonishingly large amount of money. Who's going to pay for it? The American people through jobs that they have that may not, they may not be able to continue with, through their care. And uh, that's, those are the concerns I have. Who is going to benefit? And I think very few are going to benefit. And who is it going to cost more? Lots of people. Most people that have insurance that they like. There are going to be costs that are going to be to their lives. And we're talking about something that's going to impact one-sixth of the economy of the United States. Uh, it's a very personal thing. Everybody in the country is going to be affected. And you know, people in town hall meetings say, well, what about me? What happens if I get sick? What about me? What's in it for me? What about my family? You know, I think the more people understand about this bill, the less they're going to like it. Now, if you'd like to read the bill, if you want to read the whole bill, easy to do. It's going to take a while, but if you go to my website, www.barrasso.senate.gov, there's a little place you can click on it, and it says, you know, read the 2,074-page bill. Click there. Um, and it'll take you to a place where you can start reading and uh, probably going to go all the way through Thanksgiving. But if you start now, hopefully by the time we vote on this, 8 o'clock on Saturday night, you'll have a, uh, a better understanding of why nobody should be supporting this monstrosity. Well, let's, uh, I will tell you that if you want to email us a question, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, the email address is uh, doctors at src.senate.gov. You can uh, email us youtube.com slash user slash Senate Doctor Show, facebook.com slash Senate Doctor Show, twitter.com slash Senate Doctors. And we are here every uh, Tuesday and Thursday at 5 in the afternoon uh, wanting to hear from you. Now, you know, I've been very critical of, uh, of the legislation because I think it's not very good for patients at all. And I think there are a lot of things that we could do to get the cost under control of health care because we need some reform. There are things we need to do. Uh, but I just don't think that this is it. But, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm not the only one. There was uh, an editorial in yesterday's Wall Street Journal, Wednesday, November 18th. And, and this is by the dean of uh, the Harvard Medical School. Now, he's the dean of a medical school in Harvard, which is in Massachusetts, which, of course, is where they have the Massachusetts Medical Plan. Some people have called it the Massachusetts miracle. Others have called it a disaster for their, for their state in terms of the cost that it's been, the fact that the costs have gone up, that it's harder for people to get care, longer waits to see doctors. Uh, but this is, uh, this is what the, uh, the dean of the Harvard Medical School said about this plan. He said, I give it a failing grade. Give it a failing grade. He said, the people who favor the legislation are engaged in, get this, collective denial 
collective denial. Uh, he goes on to talk about the thing that our health care system actually has problems with, things that we've talked about, cost, access, quality. And he agrees that we need reform. But he talks about deep flaws in Medicare and in Medicaid that they drive spending without optimizing care. So what's wrong with Medicare and Medicaid? Well, I'll tell you a couple of things. One is they do hardly anything in preventive care. They don't do enough, and, Med and Medicare is worse, and they do very little in coordinating care. Now, there's a special kind of Medicare called Medicare Advantage that about 11 million seniors have. This Medicare Advantage plan is one that does coordinate care, does work with prevention, does help uh, people stay healthy. Uh, it also handles a number of things that people want to cover in terms of their dental, their eye care, their uh, ear care, so with hearing. well. You know, that's one of the things that is absolutely attacked, and they take over $100 billion off of, away from Medicare Advantage in this new bill. So are there problems? Yeah. Are these the right solutions? No. I think they're heading in the wrong direction. But again, this is the, the dean of the, of the, the Harvard Medical School. Um, so he talks about problems with cost, access, and quality, things we've talked about right here. But he says this bill. You pass this, this is going to markedly accelerate, accelerate national health care spending rather than restrain it. And it will, I mean, this is the worst part. It will do nothing, he says, nothing or little to improve quality. Well, why are we going through this whole thing? Isn't it that we want to control costs, improve quality, help with access? We're seeing none of that. And, you know, for people who have concerns about what's happening in this country with health care, I, I think we really saw a, a major decision made um, that just came out two days ago that really impacts on the health care for all of us and all of us should be concerned about. It. And it's the issue of rationing. I know by now you have heard the reports where a federal group, a group uh, it's called the United States Preventive Services Task Force, under the auspices of the U.S. government, has come out with new recommendations for mammograms, a way to detect breast cancer early. They've done it with mammograms, and they also talked about it with self-examinations, with breast exams. This, to me, is the, is the, the, the first mention to, that I, I can imagine that there's going to be rationing that you can just say, look, this is the government in action or in inaction going against the doctor's wishes, against the recommendations of the United States, uh, of, the, of, the, of the American Cancer Society. And I'm joined here by Tom Coburn. I'm just talking about the, uh, for, for visitors, uh, talking to them about what this new ruling by this group in terms of breast cancer and mammograms. To me, this is going to be denied care. Others will come out and say, hey, you know, this is the government getting between a doctor and a patient. And it's going to, it fundamentally shows to me it's, it's the government, it's the, the, the Reid bill, it's the Pelosi bill showing its hands on what it's going to be like in America. Well, <clears throat> it's actually worse than that. Uh, if you just talk about bre breast cancer, <clears throat> if you talk about the number of women who have self-diagnosed breast cancer uh, when they have a mass, <clears throat> and then you look at what that could have been looked like two years before that, before they had the mass, with a mammogram. And what we know is later onset of diagnosis creates worse outcomes. Uh, but the point is, is why should the government be making that decision? Why shouldn't you and your physician be making the decision? Most doctors do a screening mammogram at 30, another at 35, start at 40 every two years, and then go to 50, and then go to every year thereafter. And that's for low-risk women. If you have high risk, and they didn't talk about high-risk women, but I can tell you that half of the breast cancers that I've diagnosed in my career, which have been thousands, uh, were most, half of them were found by the, the woman herself who had had some screening. But the fact is we're going to now discourage them from doing self-breast exam plus cut off screening mammograms. Uh, it's right. It saves money. There's no question. But if you're one of that number who's going to get missed in that, that is a poor value for you. 
which goes back to what this bill's all about, this 2,074 pages, is about government making decisions, not you making decisions. And, and it's terrible. Well, we've been answering questions and okay. going on. We've actually run out of time, but we're going to be back again Tuesday afternoon at okay. 5 o'clock. Sorry five I was late getting here. No, a lot, a lot going on, and we're going to stay here actually uh, discussing this on the floor of the Senate for the next couple of days. Vote, I think, Saturday night. But uh, tune in then. But tune into C-SPAN during the weekend because we're going to be talking on C-SPAN yes. all, all, all about the importance of uh, making sure you know enough about this health care bill to uh, call your representative, call your senator, and tell them that uh, they don't want to be for it. One thing we're going to try to do in our office and probably share with you and have you help us do is we're going to put a common language translation of the bill up. In other words, here's the first section, here's what it means. Here's the second section, here's what it means. Here's the third section. So that you can actually go to our website, coburn.senate.gov, and this should start becoming available early next week. Here's what, it, here's what it means. Here's what the bill says. Here's the legalese, but here's what it means, and here's what it means to you. Well, go to his website and go to my website right now and see the whole bill. But hey, thanks again for being with us on today's edition of the Senate Doctors.